thing I sort of want to touch base on too is is, is carbohydrate. Now I, I've done a fair bit of testing myself with the machines around eating certain types of carbs and then seeing water levels pick up, obviously pushing glycogen stores in the yeah. muscles. I've done a lot of cheat meal testing. I love my cheat meals. Sure. Um, which is most days. Yeah, which is most days, you know. And, and one, one thing I've noticed that I, that I am able to do is, um, for consistency of readings myself, I will always eat a certain type of meal the night before I come in and scan. Yeah. It's always full of carbohydrates, it's always full of fat, it's always full of protein. Mm. Now, if I go out and I eat a massive couple of big burgers, a load of fries, might have a beer, I can always wake up the next day and I can push around six kilos of water. I can increase my total body water by about six kilos, and that pushes about four, four and a half kilos of water into my skeletal muscle mass, which drives my body fat percentage down. And then as I scan throughout the day, I can actually watch that water level deplete and the body fat percentage come back yeah. up. This is a glycogen reaction within the body, obviously through uh, an, an increase in carbs, sodium, fats, sugars, yeah. everything, correct? Textbook. Cool. And, and like I say in training, guys, um, you can do that testing yourselves. If you have a fast metabolism, you can obviously do the testing a lot closer to the time that you've eaten as well. So it um, just mm. depends on the person, I suppose. Yeah, uh, yeah I, the, the key there is clearance in the gut. Yeah. And I think when you, as you mentioned right at the start of this, you know, if you're doing that night for no, no problem whatsoever, mm. um, I wouldn't, you know, if you do that, an hour before it's going to completely stuff up your results. Of course, I try and say if you're going to do it, if you have a fast metabolism, try and do it within sort of three to four hours before you jump yeah. on the skin. If yeah. you, and if your, if your metabolism's firing that fast and you know it's going to come through, you'll see that's yeah. not to spike yeah. in that sort of yeah. time. And that, I mean, there's a functionality piece. People have got to eat, obviously. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So um, oh, the consistency piece, we just came back to yeah. that again. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you do, <laughs> just be, and, and I know, Colin, you mentioned a minute ago about. Um, females and the menstrual cycle. I mean, yep. the same thing applies in terms of the consistency of testing. And I would, uh, I don't know what you do. I, we I always think, recommend the first five days yeah. of the cycle because that's when the hormones are fairly stable. 100%. So estrogen and progesterone aren't yep. doing this. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 yeah, the first five days, absolutely. And, and so we will see, because we will see with estrogen, for example, we'll tend to see an increased nitrogen um, retention. Sorry, so, uh, uh, fluid retention. Let's fluid just talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, we'll get it the same, we still get fluid retention with progesterone, but it's a different mechanism, mm -hmm. which doesn't matter, but you do have that fluid retention. So for women that go, that's fluctuate their weight or their, yeah, their, let's call it their body weight, will fluctuate three kilos easily mm -hmm. over the yeah. course of that yeah, cycle. That yep. um, that's absolutely hormone driven. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely estrogen and right. um, progesterone yeah. driven. And uh, and I'm not an expert on the menstrual <laughs> cycle, but I do know, uh, uh, you know that we do initially around between day seven and day 14, get a spike in estrogen. Yeah. Okay, so first five days makes great sense. Yep. And then around day maybe 12 to 16, you'll get your progesterone spike. Mm -hmm. And then after that, um, it will tend to plateau back out yeah. again. And then things like glucomizing hormone kick in and follicle stimulating hormone, but they don't have as much of an impact on the fluid retention piece. Yep. So it's really by about day 14, so between days, I don't, I'm not an expert, but there's about a seven to 10 day period in the middle there yep. where the hormone, estrogen, and progesterone influence is significant. Yeah. And I think that's fairly consistent with what female, um, yes. females report yep. around that. So testing every four weeks, four weeks. within yeah. those first yeah, five Yeah, in a perfect world. In the in first five days, because in the first five days of that, you've just got to establish when that is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because yes. the first five days, you're pretty level, like luteinizing hormone's pretty consistent, follicle stimulating's consistent, you've got a little bit of estrogen, but it's pretty consistent. Then it's a bit all over the place for about seven to 10 days. But even the last 10 to 14 days, you still have relatively high, high water. Yeah, yeah, and high water. luteinizing hormone yeah. and high um, follicle stimulating hormone whilst the cycle runs its course. I like to refer to those first five days as the days of the, as the, days of the month where you know Hubby can go have a beer with his mates. And oh, right. yeah. Well, I'm not going anywhere near that. Yeah, whatever. You're in your own pee. But the, the testing I've also uh, told a lot of female uh, clients who uh, have access to the machine is to give themselves one day of the week. 
same time of day, obviously conditions the yeah, same, same each time. Yeah. Test yourself for four to five weeks. Watch what your water levels do. Think about where you yeah, are inside. Yeah, interesting. See yeah. what's happening yeah. on the results. See yeah. what happens because yeah. we're all still individual, women. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. And and that is the same with medication. Some people do metabolize things more quickly. Mm -hmm. Overall, the trend will be the same. They're okay. either they're either going to be diuretic yep. of some form or nitrogen retentive of some sort okay. or increase um, you know intraoral fluid of some sort sure. I mean diuretics are diuretic yep. it just might, some people will experience significant diuresis and other people won't okay. um, and, and yeah and I mean that and that's not you don't need to measure that you just do that yourself you know yeah. you just you keep things pretty consistent and I think you're in pretty good shape if you can do that yeah, yeah. and uh, for women who are on any um, Hormone replacement therapy, yeah, or but same it's a similar deal. Thing, it, it, same yeah. mechanisms like the hormone HRT stuff, similar to even in men. So yeah. testosterone supplementation, the anabolics, and um, the, the HRT for the for the women, uh, it's the same deal. They'll work on either a they'll tend to be retentive, yeah, um, and they will have an impact on nitrogen balance and things like that. But again, if you're on HRT and you're on HRT. Yeah, you know, consistently across your skin, it's yeah. no problem. So we go back to the consistency. Yeah, if you yeah. if you commence that, yeah, you'll see a shift of several percent. Yep. And 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 total volume of mm. body water and lean muscle mass, you'll see a shift. There's no question. Mm. And if you're new to taking a new medication, often that will take several weeks to sort itself yes. out as well. So if you if you commence HRT as a female, and you've been scanning previously, you know it's important to clarify that the response that they're getting is absolutely expected. It's yes. absolutely normal and that's yep. absolutely individual. We're gonna scan now on several occasions over the next, whatever, one, two, three months, periods of time. We'll give it a chance to plateau itself and work itself out. We'll keep everything else as consistent as we can and their numbers will, will come back together. But yep. you know, you've got to expect that to happen. I mean, the body, it's a really dynamic scenario and that would not matter if it was BIA, DEXA, yeah, body pods, it doesn't matter. Yeah. They're, they're all going to have those slight perturbations on the on the result. And that's totally normal. Yeah. 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 Cool. So we keep banging on back to those standardizing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's not easy to do with clients because it's not always the highest priority. But if you can make it consistently, you know, um, pre-workout, you know, you know, or, or, or don't be ad hoc. So don't mm. do it before a workout one day and after a workout another day, or you know, as best you can. Mm. Um, keep it keep it pretty straightforward. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks, Dr. Chris, and thanks, Pete, for all your expertise today. If you need any more information or you would like to uh, ask a few more questions, please feel free to contact us via our website or all the social channels. And thank you once again.